Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, I need to replace some of my brushes. And I'd also like to update a little bit of a brush test review for you. So as you can see here, I have a big assortment of brushes that I use. Some of these I really like, some of them I hate, but a lot of them are falling apart. And so I bought some new ones. I will be continuing to test some different ones, but let's re recap a little bit of what we've learned previously. I did a video a while ago where I tested the expensive versions versus the bulk pack versions at Hobby Lobby, and the winner was bulk packs. So I'm going to expand that review a little bit, and I mainly bought bulk packs from both Hobby Lobby and Michaels, as well as a few nicer brushes from um, Blick Art Supplies, and we're going to be putting them to the test. In another one of my old videos, I showed the five brushes that I think any artist needs. You really don't need more, even though I have a lot more. Um, but my favorite out of all those brushes is always the angle brush. So today we're going to be testing exclusively the angle brushes among several different sets and types and bristle types so that you can see the difference all within the same half inch angle brush type. Here is the testing criteria I am going to be using. I'm going to do this in kind of three rounds. The first is to actually test each of the brushes for their general quality, their movement, and their precision. Then using those metrics, I will look at the price and kind of an assess a value. Was it worth the actual price of the brush? Then I'll tally the scores and I will do a final test where I'm gonna paint using only angled brushes with the top performers so I can see how they work in action. The white handled brush is Craftsmart's Black Taclon. The silver handled brush is Royal and Lang Nickel. It does not say what type of bristles. The orange handled brush is the Fine Touch and that is white nylon bristles. The black handled brush is the fine touch, and I also could not find what type of bristles this was. The blue handled brush is Craft Smart's Tempura, which I believe is brown Taclon bristles. And our final brush, which has kind of a wood, black, and orange, handle is from Princeton, the Snap series, and this has golden Taclon bristles. What I'm looking for in quality is what feels nice, what looks nice, and what seems well-built. This is an old, well-used, well-loved brush that was, at one point, good quality. I have kind of used and abused it, and you'll see we don't want that um, the bristles to be fraying like what we're seeing there where they're kind of coming apart but we do want a nice crisp line on that angle and as far as well built we really don't want bristle fallout now that seems kind of obvious but this does happen these I bought on Amazon and I painted something and there were just bristles all over it the bristles just fall out all over the place so that is unacceptable First up, we have the Craft Smart Black Taclon. In general, it has a nice look and feel to it, but you can see that the tip already looks kind of frayed. It it's nice and you know gets to the point, but it's it's not a nice smooth tip. There's no bristle fallout, but I'm gonna give this a six for quality. Next, we have the Royal Lang Nickel, and I mean, this is a beauty of a brush. The, it feels really nice. I love the kind of chrome handle. The bristles are soft and supple yet sturdy, and the angle line is, it's, it's perfect. I absolutely think that this is a beautiful brush, and I'm gonna give this one a 10 out of 10 for quality. 
I'm not sure that putting this Craftsmart white nylon one after the previous brush is a fair test of quality because by comparison, this looks like a much lower quality brush and it is, but there doesn't really seem to be anything very wrong with it. it it already has a nicer line and what appears to be nicer bristle dis density than the first Craftsmart brush. So for this one, I'll give it a seven. It's a step up from the very first one. Initially, I thought this was a beautiful brush. Not quite as nice as the Royal and Langnickel, but you know, durability, it aesthetically felt nice in my hand, although I originally graded this a nine after two uses, I had two bristles fall out. So I've downgraded this one to a seven. This is the Craftsmart Brown Taclon. And when you look at it initially, it's the handle is okay. The look of it, it looks like a little bit cheaper of a brush, but those bristles, there's a really sharp cut on those, a nice angle, and the bristles feel really good. So even though it's not the prettiest, I'm going to give this one an eight. Finally, we have our Princeton Gold Taclon. I love when brushes come with that little protector thing. And this is a very nice looking brush. I like the wooden handle, how it feels. And the bristles seem nice. They don't have as sharp of a diagonal point as maybe I prefer. I mean, it's it's really close. It's gonna be a nice brush, but it's still not quite as nice as our Royal and Lang Nickel. So I'm giving this one a nine and a half. Now let's discuss the movement. And by this, I will show you what I mean using my control of my old brush. And that's just how the brush puts paint down on the paper. You'll see that since it's an old one, I can't get a fine line and individual bristle strokes really do seem prominent and kind of ruin the effect of the brush. For this test, I'm gonna be using an Artist Loft blue paint just on all of them. And we'll start with the Craftsmart Black Taclon. Now, when I put a brush stroke down, it's heavily influenced by kind of those fraying bits on the top, but it does have a nice movement to it. It's nice and supple. My score for this is a seven. Moving on to the Royal and Lang Nickel, you can see that the brush strokes are nice and straight and they don't have too much flex in the way that it distorts things, but they do move pretty nicely. I, I really like the feel of this brush, so 10. And now the Fine Touch White Nylon. I, am, I think these bristles are too long for what they're made of because they get real squishy. You can't make very good movements or brush strokes with it. Uh, a six. Now the Fine Touch Golden Taclon, I think. And this is one of the brushes that I had high hopes for. So it's not too surprising that I like the way it moves. I did push a little harder on the second one, but I like how you can maintain kind of parallel lines. And in general, I liked how this one moved. I give this one a nine. The Craftsmart Brown Taclon and the smushy parts at the top are my fault. I put too much paint on. Overall, I really like the way this brush moved. I'm going to give this one a nine and a half. And the Princeton, the bristles are nice. I like the way it feels and the bristles do move nicely, uh, but not quite as good. I'm going to give it a nine. And the final round of this first section of the test is sharpness and precision. This is where I want to determine how well the brush functions for precision lines, curves, and edges. For each of these, I'm going to make a few lines and then make this kind of circular triangle shape to test it. 
And the Craft Smart performed oh, okay. I wasn't super crazy about this brush in general. The, even the more I used it, it it's it's a bit messy to use. Now, I'd paint with this, don't get me wrong. If I had this in my bucket, I'd probably paint with it. But if you're trying to make a decision, this one is a five. It's not great. Next up is the Royal and Langnickel. And unsurprisingly, this brush performs very well in edging lines and circular kind of motions. Any Anything that, that I'm doing wrong here, it feels like user error. I definitely, using this brush, I feel like I'm punching above my weight. Uh, I'm giving this one a 10. No surprise, but look how precise those lines are. And it doesn't even compare. Now to the Fine Touches White Nylon. It's definitely doing better than the first Craft Smart one, um, but not by a lot. Was not super impressed by this one, um, especially here. It was real hard to get the lines. Not as hard as with the first brush, but it was harder. Six. And here is the fine touch version. I was prepared to be really impressed by this brush and it, it worked well, but I was a little underwhelmed by how it performed in the precision test. So I rated this one a seven. This craft smart brown Taclon tempura paintbrush is a real sleeper. It it doesn't look like much, but it moves really nice. You can get really nice smooth curves, straight lines, fine lines. This one's a real surprise. I'm giving this one an eight. Again, our final brush does pretty well. It it has fairly nice sharp lines. Any of the kind of wobbliness I put into it was my fault. Um, I don't feel quite as intimidated by this brush as the other one, but I am able to get really thin, fine lines with this brush. So this one's going to get a nine. Before I tally these up, just keep in mind, all of these absolutely would work to put paint to canvas. If you're using one of these and it works for you, that's perfectly fine. This is a personal preference thing, but I am trying to help people make decisions if they are looking to purchase new brushes. In order to assess the value, I need to take into consideration all the other factors we've tested. Is it worth the actual price? So let's go through each of these. First up, we have our CraftSmart Black Taclon, and it costs about 69 cents when you account for the individual brush in the pack. And I'm gonna give that value about a six, which brings its total to 24. The Royal and Lang Nickel one, on the other hand, is a more expensive brush. It's $4.99, so it's quite a bit more expensive for a single brush, but it performs really well, and I think it's hard to knock it too much. I am gonna knock off one point, giving its total 39. The Finer Touch, the white nylon, was okay, but it only costs about a dollar for that brush, so the value is okay. It makes up for the increased price from the first one we tested. Its total is going to be 26. The Finer Touch, the nicer version of this brush. Now, I had originally given these different scores, including the value I had as a 10 and the quality as a 9, but again, after I did more testing, a few of the bristles fell out, which I just don't think is acceptable, so I reduced its value to about an 8. It's still only $1.43 for the brush, so it's still a good, good value just not as good as I initially thought it was. The total for that one is 31. 
Then we have the Craft Smart Brown Taclon, and this again was kind of the real sleeper. It had really good stats across the board. It's barely more expensive, $1.54 for the brush, and that's mainly because it came in a smaller multi-pack. I'm gonna give that value a 10 out of 10. Its total score is 35.5. And finally, we have the Princeton Gold Taclon. This performed really well across the board as well, although I am going to knock it down a few points. It's worth the money, but it is the most expensive brush that we tested here, and it is not the best performer, and it's also tied for the second best performer, in my opinion. That's great. I made some squiggles on a piece of canvas paper and I pulled on their bristles, but what are they really like to work with? We won't really know how good of brushes they are until we actually paint with them because part of this is going to be preference. So I took the top four performers, the bottom two I just didn't want to work with. They weren't that great and weren't worth my time really to keep comparing because I know they're not going to be up there. So we've, we're working with the top four performers here, the Royal and Langnickel, the Finer Touch, Craftsmart Brown Taclon, and the Princeton. And I went ahead and just painted this whole painting minus my very final step where I did some weird outlining stuff. Um, but the whole thing is painted with these four brushes. And I'm just gonna kind of speed through this and tell you a few of the observations I had while painting this little pumpkin painting. For supplies, so you know what I'm using, I do have a piece of watercolor paper that I have gessoed and taped down onto this board. I find it works well for painting acrylic paint on it. I am using a mix of craft paint as well as more art focus paint or studio grade paint. And I even have some acrylic inks in here at some point, but I wanted to test it with some different mediums. Plus that's typically how I paint. I mix in a few of those things together to get different effects. And I thought it was a good test to see how it performed in different situations. In general, some of my thoughts that I have are that the Princeton one is good for kind of like long flowing lines if because the bristles seem to be more pliable and I think that's mainly because they're just a tiny bit longer. If you want to get some really precise edges and lines though, both the tempura and the um, Royal and Lang Langnickel, I've said that 10 times, why can I not remember how to say that, are really good at that, as well as the finer touch one was pretty good at that, but it does have um, some slight in inconsistencies in how it actually is cut, so that I guess goes kind of along the lines of my downgrading the quality later. Other than that, these all performed beautifully. I was surprised that I was able to get um, a painting done using only one type of brush. Usually I switch between a lot of different types and shapes of brushes, so it goes to show you that you don't necessarily need a huge variety, even though I'm guilty of that. Uh, I would work again with any of these brushes unless that the finer touch one starts spilling more bristles. It only lost a few, so I'm not sure how hard I can be on it. It could have just been a one-off, but I don't know. It still kind of bothers me when bristles fall out, especially when they're brand new. If it's my fault because they've sat in water, okay, that's, that's my fault. But I was really careful because I was shooting this video and I didn't want anything I did to impact the results of it. So I took really good care of these. I'll get off that train of thought. Anyways, I would recommend most of these brushes for painting. And it is interesting to me that across the same brands, within the same price points, that things performed wildly differently. We had one poor performer from Craftsmart. We had one poor performer from Hobby Lobby, and then kind of ultimately maybe two of them. We had one that really didn't look like much of anything, but worked great for Michaels. 
And then we had the two that were from Blick Art Supplies that were very nice, but you know, there wasn't a huge amount of difference between. And if you're getting started, I mean, even if you're a pretty experienced artist, a lot of these would work well for you. You don't have to spend a ton of money on brushes. My three recommendations are going to be the Royal and Lang Nickel, the Craft Smart, it's a brown Taclon, and it comes in a pack of different angle sizes for tempura paints. It technically says, it does say you can also use this for a variety of other paints. And the Princeton Golden Taclon brush. Those are my three recommendations from this. I also have a lot of luck with just the general bulk packs of that kind of golden Taclon one. Those ones I've never had a quality issue with. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope I did my math right this time instead of how I messed up on my last painting video and tallied the results wrong. <laughs> Either way, you can double check me and let me know if I did it right. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a magically creative day.